Powered by the Montana Television Network. Montana This Morning continues on Montana's News Leader. 631 on this Friday. Incredible news out of Wisconsin this morning. A teen missing since October has been found alive. We have the latest. Plus, changes are coming to the Gallatin County Detention Center. More on that in a moment. Good morning. Happy Friday, Southwest Montana. Chelly and Missy O'Malley with you here. Our top story, as we mentioned, Wisconsin family gets some good news after suffering a tragedy. Jamie Kloss found alive Thursday night. And she went missing on the same day, October 15th, that her parents were killed. John Lawrence has our details. A traumatic Thursday with a happy ending. Jamie Kloss, who was last seen nearly three months ago, is found alive in Gordon, Wisconsin. There was rumors earlier, and I prayed and prayed they were true, and they come to not be true, and I just shut myself totally down. But shortly afterward, authorities gave the family the update they've been waiting for. Then to find out two hours later that she was found, I just, I just cannot believe this. The 13-year-old disappeared on October 15th. That's the same day her parents, James and Denise, were discovered shot to death in their home. Authorities found the bodies after getting a mysterious 911 call made from Denise Kloss's phone. There was no one in the house when police arrived, but they believe that Kloss was there when her parents were killed. A suspect was taken into custody, but authorities didn't share any more details other than saying this case is still an active investigation. Jamie Kloss will soon be reunited with relatives. I'm John Lawrence reporting. Barron County Sheriff Chris Fitzgerald issued a statement thanking the family for its support and asked the people for respect for their privacy during this very emotional time. Wow. Andrew's office will be doing a press conference at 9 o'clock uh, this morning on that to look at for more on our new news and then coming up tonight at 5.30 as well Very and on the CBS Evening News. Relieved families across Absolutely the Wisconsin true. area, I can only imagine. Absolutely true. Wow. Interesting morning out there, Matt. Yep. Uh, there were some stars, if you could see them through the <laughs> layer of fog that was in place. <laughs> yeah. and, and the fog is patchy. It's mm, not sure. everywhere, but uh, definitely some of those low-lying areas, areas like Belgrade, we're dealing with uh, fog at times this morning. We're seeing it in Butte. Uh, along the Madison Valley, there have been some reports of fog. Temperatures into the teens. I want you to remember to turn on your lights. I don't care if the sun's up over the horizon. If it's foggy, please turn on your lights. It does help quite a bit. We've got clear skies. That fog should burn off fairly quickly. And temperatures eventually into the mid to upper 30s and low 40s for much of the area. There's some of that fog there in uptown Butte this morning. We do have pretty mild stretch, but there is snow in the forecast. We'll talk about that and why that fog's in place. That's all coming up in just a few minutes. I'm going to reiterate that, Matt. Yeah, drive with your lights on today. It'll just be a good idea. We'll keep you from being a headline here on Montana this morning. <laughs> 634 now, Gallon County Commission has approved a half a million dollars in upgrades for the Gallon County Detention Center. A month ago, Sheriff Brian Goodkin put in a request with the commission for 18 new beds, updated cameras, and a $170,000 body scanner. Sheriff Goodkin says the upgrades will help improve safety at the detention center. I believe we have the best jail in the state, if not the region. It was well designed and, you know, we're, we're years and years into it. So we're just adapting and we're, we're learning as we go and, and making those necessary changes. But this, this is by far the best jail around. Now, Sheriff Goodkin says the money for the upgrades doesn't come from taxpayers. It comes from the money collected from housing other other counties' inmates. And a new brewery topped with 16 apartments could be coming to Midtown Bozeman this year. The proposed three-story building will be located on the corner of Durston and 7th, where the old Subaru repair shop used to be located. The developer said originally they planned to build on the west side of town, but later decided to choose this location because of how close it is to downtown. Manager of the project, Colin Rucker, says that the projects like these allow people to be close to busy areas and reduce the sprawl. And we wanted to bring life back into the center of Bozeman. And so by building those apartments, it allows people to be able to walk down five blocks to Maine and it allows people to easily get around. And we hope that other uh, landowners in the area will follow suit. Now, Ruckirk says that he is working on getting the building permits for the projects and says if everything is approved, they hope to break ground in March. More to follow on that. Meantime, Montana State Senate President Scott Sales has requested a bill that would spend $8 million of state money to help build President Trump's proposed border wall. Now, we reported this week that Montana Governor Steve Bullock might not agree. Yesterday, Governor Bullock made it clear that he's not on board with that plan. Governor says he has plenty of respect for Senator Sales, but says it's puzzling. 
that Sales would propose spending state money on a construction project in California when he's rarely supported infrastructure investments in Montana. Senator Stales, a Republican from Bozeman, told MTN News Wednesday he believes Montanans support Trump's proposed border wall. He said $8 million would just be Montana's tiny share of the cost, help get the project going, and maybe break a stalemate that has shut down uh, federal government. Governor Bullock, however, said that money could be used elsewhere. $8 million is significant. $8 million is a third of the costs of what the state share of Medicaid will be. $8 million can do incredible work for local infrastructure in communities all across our state. So I don't think that it makes a lot of sense to use Montana taxpayer dollars on federal projects. Uh, it's important to note that uh, Senator Sales, Sales proposal has not yet been introduced to the legislature. And staying in legislature news here for a moment, Democrats at the Montana legislature say they will be sponsoring their own bill to extend Montana's Medicaid expansion program. They made the announcement at the Capitol News Conference and said they are putting together a bill that will be a group effort. Representative Mary Caffaro of Helena says that she'll be requesting the bill, which will extend Medicaid expansion indefinitely. The program provides government-funded health coverage to about 95,000 low-income adults set to expire this June. Republicans who control the legislature say they would likely support that extending the program, but they also want to add some reforms and target the program to the more truly needy. Now, Caffaro says expanding, expanded Medicaid has been a big success here in Montana and that Democrats want to craft a bill that will extend and improve the pr program. We want a totally transparent process, one that is informed by the public, informed by people who have Medicaid, informed by stakeholders. So we're inviting all folks to be involved in the process. This is just the beginning. We as Democrats are committed to preserving the health of our constituents. Now the fate of Medicaid expansion is likely one of the biggest issues before the 2019 legislature, if not the biggest. Back on the national scene, White House legal team reportedly gearing up to try to stop special counsel Robert Mueller's report from ever being released publicly. CNN's Pamela Brown has more. President Trump won't say whether he wants Robert Mueller's report on the Russia probe to be made public. The special counsel's final report, do you want that to be made public? Uh, we'll have to see. Uh, there's been no collusion whatsoever. We'll have to see. The president's remarks come after CNN has learned that the White House counsel office under the new direction of Pat Cipollone is gearing up for a fight to keep the report private by adding 17 more lawyers to its team. Trump's legal team is preparing to argue that a large portion of the information in Mueller's investigation should be protected by executive privilege, leaving only a heavily redacted version of the report to be released to the public. But Democrats are vowing to use their new power in the House to release it. I'm prepared to make sure we do everything possible so that the public has the advantage of as much of the information as it can. And as we await the release of the Mueller report, today CNN has learned that Mueller interviewed Trump's campaign pollster Tony Fabrizio. The revelation comes after it was revealed that Trump campaign chairman Paul Manafort shared polling data with Russian national Konstantin Kalimnik who prosecutors say has ties to the same Russian military intelligence unit that hacked the Democratic Party during the 2016 campaign. It's coordination between the campaign and the Russians that the Mueller team has been looking for. Today, the president said he had no knowledge of the information sharing. Did you know that Paul Manafort was sharing polling data from your campaign with the Russians? No, I didn't know anything about it. Nothing about it. With Kalimnik as the go-between, Manafort spokesman claims the data was ultimately intended for two powerful pro-Russian Ukrainian oligarchs who owed Manafort millions. And tonight, Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin on Capitol Hill facing tough questions from House lawmakers on the department's decision to ease sanctions on companies tied to Russian oligarch Oleg Deripaska. It's one of the worst classified briefings we've received from the Trump administration. The secretary barely testified. In a statement, Mnuchin defended his decision, stating that these companies were, quote, undergoing significant restructuring and governance changes that sever Deripaska's control and significantly diminish his ownership. Democrats are now mulling over whether to formally push back against the sanctions relief for the Russian companies that was announced last month. 
And we do have to take a quick break. Coming up here in just a moment, our very own Patrice Parks takes a look at the Better Business Bureau top three scams of the year for Montana. But first, we're going to check in with John Dickerson, see what's coming up at 7 o'clock on CBS This Morning. Good morning ahead on CBS This Morning. We're in Wisconsin after missing 13-year-old Jamie Kloss was found alive. Kloss was last seen in October before her parents were killed in their home. Hear from the family who helped Jamie to safety. Plus, first on CBS This Morning, we're in Puerto Rico with Hamilton star Lin-Manuel Miranda. David Begno talks to the show's creator about stepping back into his iconic role and what it means for the hurricane-ravaged island. We'll see you with all that at 7. 